quiz. What do these two seemingly contradictory situations have in common? One, you have unexpected free time. Two, you have a long to-do list. Answer, both can kind of put you at loose ends. Both can kind of make you unsure of what to do next. Both can kind of have you spinning around wondering, how should you spend your time? And really, even on a normal day, you might question if you've chosen the right thing to do with your time. In one of my networking groups, someone posted recently, how do you know when you're doing the right thing? How do you prioritize? So yeah, I thought we'd spend a little bit of time today poking around of this question of how do you know if you're doing the right thing at the right time? By the end, we'll have four guideposts to help you find your way. So let's dive in. All right, welcome back my productivity pals. So let's ask that question again. How do you know if you're doing the right thing? How do you prioritize? How do you choose? You can ask those kind of neutrally, but really it's hard not to hear it. There's some worry or anxiety underlying those questions. It's not, am I doing the right thing? But am I doing the right thing? So let's address that off the top. It helps me to remember that there probably isn't one perfect answer to this question most of the time. When we're really caught up in this question, we might actually be stuck in worry or other unpleasant states of mind. Thinking back to times when I've been troubled about, you know, just the right thing to do, I was actually hoping that that answer the answer to that question of what to do would solve my sense of overwhelm, as if making this choice perfectly would be a magic bullet that would reduce my stress and get my to-do list down to some manageable size. Or there were other days when I had unexpected free time and I was getting kind of like existential about it, like the answer was gonna somehow anchor me, keep me from floating around in uncertainty and disconnection, but really, well, I don't have any empirical proof for this, but I'm gonna bet that there are actually a host of things that you could choose to do in those circumstances that would probably be just fine. I don't think you need to fret over getting it like exactly right, like I'm gonna do A, then B, then C, or maybe if you end up doing B, then A, then C, you're probably gonna be okay. Answering this question of what to do next perfectly, or am I doing just the right thing, mm, is probably not what's required to immediately dispatch this issue of an overwhelming to-do list or magically resolve your existential worries. You probably just need good enough. Not perfect, but good enough. And if that's the case, if there's no like, perfect answer, then maybe asking this question of doing the right thing or setting priorities is actually like a little disguise. Maybe that those are just the words coming out of your mouth when inside you're actually feeling anxious or worried or overwhelmed or disconnected. And if so, you know, like maybe you can check in with yourself to see if that's what's actually happening. If it is what's actually happening, Maybe you pause and maybe you use some calming techniques or self-compassion techniques before you actually try to make the decision of what to do because I don't think it's easy to make good decisions from a place of anxiety or worry. I've just experienced for myself and I actually, in preparation for this video, found a couple of studies from 2015 and 16 that I will link below. I think that they all say that making decisions while in an anxious state is not a recipe for good decision making. So maybe the place to start is to realize that you are actually in anxiety or worry, disconnection, fretting. And then the first thing you do is actually soothe yourself. Maybe use some soothing techniques, some self-compassion, and then pick something to do. And maybe that something to do is not perfect, but just good enough. Okay, so then what is good enough? You may actually already know. Once you've calmed down enough to realize that the stakes aren't life or death, you might just kind of know what the next best thing to do is. In which case you can just click on to my next video and enjoy the rest of this channel. But maybe you do want to think a little bit about different ways that you could approach this question. Now, just like there's no perfect answer to the question of what the right thing to do is, there's probably no perfect method for deciding the next thing to do. In fact, I'm kind of sure of it <laughs> because we know that circumstances change and people have different 
preferences and needs. And what helps one person resolve an issue at one time may not be what helps another or what helps that same person at a different time. But let's walk through a few methods and at the end, I'll share my favorite with you. Okay, so there are a few frameworks out there for deciding what you might do. One of the most popular ones is the Eisenhower matrix. It breaks your tasks down into four categories, urgent and important, not urgent, but important, urgent, but not important, and not important and not urgent. Personally, I don't bother to take the time to actually categorize my tasks and projects into this matrix, but I do kind of consider them with this uh, question of unimportant, important, urgent, not urgent when I look over my list. And understanding those distinctions, urgent, non-urgent, important, not important, can maybe help you see your tasks in a new light. If something is both urgent and important, it makes a pretty good candidate for what you should be doing today. I mean, if there's a deadline in front of you, it's probably a good idea to do what you can to meet that deadline. Moving to the other quadrant, those that are important but not urgent, those can be scheduled for later, but ideally you are working in this important but not urgent quadrant most of the time that you're ahead enough in life that everything urgent isn't constantly barreling down on you. And if you are living in urgent all the time, you might wanna pause and kind of refigure your life a little bit. Cause I don't know about you, but I do not li love living in urgent all the time. It's not a nice place to be. If tasks are not important and not urgent, you can probably just let them go or perhaps put them on your someday maybe back burner list. If tasks are urgent but not important, you're probably being asked to do something that's maybe someone else's job or help someone with something that isn't in your sphere of important. You can just say no or you can delegate or, you know, maybe doing this urgent but not important to you thing for others will serve you in another way, like building a relationship or keeping a larger group endeavor moving forward. And then, you know, you could choose to do it. But the caution here is not to just choose the urgent thing because it's urgent. Stephen Covey says that the noise of the urgent creates the illusion of importance. So don't let urgent fool you. It may actually not be important. So if it is urgent, but not important to you, maybe take a beat to see if it's really your best option. Okay, so urgent is kind of obvious. It's like, bleh, urgent. But how do you define important? Well, I've read a lot of productivity books out there and they kind of all say the same thing about this. They want you to have a vision and have some goals to support that vision. And if you don't have those, maybe you want to pause and, you know, step out of your day to day task level or, you know, even the project level and do some thinking on the goal and vision levels. And uh, once you have some clarity there, important may become more obvious to you because important is anything that moves those goals forward, ultimately fulfilling your vision. And if there are tasks or actions that must be done before others can get done, then that's even more important because you don't want to build roadblocks for yourself to get towards your goals. Now, let's be honest, <laughs> it doesn't always work perfectly like that. I mean, there have been times where I could identify as something as important, but I just didn't have the oomph for it. I couldn't get myself to do it. Or there are other times where I'm so overwhelmed that everything seems important and I'm just kind of spinning. Whew. Those are times when I was actually in major burnout. Those are symptoms of burnout. So if you're in that situation where everything seems, seems important or you just can't get yourself to do anything because you're so your tank is so on empty, you might need to take some other steps to change the situation. Like these rubrics and tools I'm offering up here, you know, they may not be the point. So you may need to take some serious rest or, you know, consider some taking some time off. Okay, so that's the Eisenhower matrix. Important, unimportant, urgent, non-urgent. Another framework, or let's say approach, is eat the frog. In his book, Eat the Frog, author Brian Tracy talks about doing the least pleasant thing first just to get it over with. And once you've done that difficult thing, you'll just coast from there for the rest of the day. So, you know, one of the things you could do when you're asking yourself, oh, well, what should I do now is just do the hardest thing, the one you're resisting the most. And after you do that, man, you're gonna feel like a freaking rock star after that. 
I personally, yeah, I rarely eat the frog. I often do the opposite. I ease myself into my tasks. I like to start with kind of low resistance items and then build momentum. But, you know, you do you, you to do you. And, um, you know, I do like the general idea that eating the frog comes up with, which is that it recognizes that you might have some feelings <laughs> about what it is that you're going to do. And I think getting in touch with those can be uh, helpful in you understanding kind of the totality of the question of what there is to do next. You know me, I always love a methodology that at least acknowledges the existence of your feelings and experience. Okay, so another framework, you could weigh your tasks along the value effort matrix. More value, less value, more effort, less effort. So value can mean dollar value, that could be your focus in a business context, or to make it more general, we could swap out value for importance, like we talked about earlier in the Eisenhower matrix. Valuable tasks and important tasks both get you farther along in your projects, which satisfy, satisfy your goals, which eventually help you meet your vision. So in this framework, the, the golden tasks uh, in that matrix uh, quadrant are easy and valuable. Lots of bang for your buck. But of course, many tasks are difficult, so you'll want to weigh the effort against the value and some days it's just going to feel very effortful and other days it's not. So the same task can take on a different level of difficulty depending on your mood, your hormones, the environment, you know, whether you're an introvert and you're an extrovert and that, that is being served at the time, all those things. So, you know, maybe it's sunny outside, whatever. You might have had a good night's sleep or a bad night's sleep. Get it, sometimes things are hard and sometimes the same thing is easy. You just might wanna cut yourself some slack and have some flexibility in this regard. Now, decision fatigue is real and spending a lot of time deciding what to do next may not be a good use of your brain fuel. So there is one decision I can make for you. And I think that next thing you should do right now is tap that thumbs up like button so YouTube knows that you are enjoying this video and that they should recommend it to others. All right, so what other framework might you use? You could consider the good at and enjoy matrix that pits how good you are at something versus how much you enjoy it. Something that you are both good at and enjoy is the sweet spot. That's the box of the matrix you want to be in. Some call it the desire zone or the zone of genius. I mentioned that in my how to say yes video that I will link at the end of this video so you can just click on that when you're done with this one and keep on watching. If there is something that you are not good at and don't enjoy, well, I question whether that should even be on your list of options. So maybe you use this matrix as a filter for whether something should even be under consideration in the first place. If you're miserable doing a job and everyone else is miserable because you're doing a lousy job, well, maybe that should be someone else's job. Now, that's not always realistic. I do not enjoy and I'm not particularly good at, say, mopping the kitchen floor, but currently there is nobody else to delegate it to. So I just, you know, do what I can. So we have looked at choosing what you should be doing under a few angles here. There's the Eisenhower matrix, eating the frog, the value effort matrix, and the good at enjoying matrix. And all of them are predicated on this idea that you even know what your options are. So. <laughs> do you keep a project list or task list? If not, could you maybe do a brain dump to see what your choices are? If you don't have your options in front of you, out of your head, they are likely to have all the same pull on you. And it's probably gonna be pretty jumbled up in there. In fact, just the fact that you don't have everything out of your head and in front of you could be the reason that you were feeling at loose ends. And you know, the reason you're asking this question, am I doing the right thing? How about how do I set my priorities? I'll paste in some research below that says that we can only keep three to five things in our head at a time. So I don't know about you, but I have 18 things on my current task list and I just counted, yes, I have 89 things on my larger project list. So there is no way I could keep all of that in my mind at once, let alone make an assessment about the best thing to do from those lists. So I highly, highly, highly recommend doing a brain dump getting it out of your head, and you may just know the next best thing just from that. I said at the end, I'd tell you my favorite method. That's my favorite method. When my lists and tasks are right out in front of me, I can just look at them and say, yeah, there it is. David Allen says, you can only feel good about what you're doing when you know what you're not doing. Going on to paraphrase him a little bit more, he says, 
That means surfacing all of the, oh, I'll do it later stuff that you told yourself you were going to do, but didn't really get clear about. If it's just bouncing around in your head, then you're not really clear about what it really is. If you've really committed to doing it, the time and resources it's going to take to do it and so on. So if you have a lot of those rattling around, you may not know which one to pick. So I say it again, get it out of your head, get it into some place where you can see it. And you don't need to design a fancy to-do system. You don't need to buy a expensive software or fancy planner. Just use a scrap of paper, you know, that gets you a lot of the way there. And don't forget, circumstances will guide you if you let them. If you're someone, for example, who should only be using Wi-Fi on a secure network for your the privacy of your client's data, and you're going to be in a public coffee shop uh, using their Wi-Fi, then yeah, maybe preparing a tax return on an online software is not the right thing for you to be doing at that time. Or maybe, you know, if you're pooped from a day of meetings, then mopping that kitchen floor, <laughs> the one that you both hate and are not good at, could actually be the perfect thing because, you know, it's the best thing I can do to get up and move at that time. And oh, another example, if you only have, say, 20 minutes before you need to leave for a doctor's appointment, you know, maybe that's not the time to start the 90 minute training video that you're not allowed to pause. <laughs> you know, that's the time I use to like catch up on reading my technical newsletters, maybe. Maybe you have something like that in your life. Anyway, once you go through these filters of what's even possible given your circumstances, your list will automatically be narrowed. And from there, your gut will probably tell you what's best to work on. Something, you know, will just spark on its own. Something that's maybe a little more urgent than the others, something that's maybe a little more important than the others, that will kind of rise to the surface and make itself known. Something funny happened over the few days I was outlining this video. It was a weekend day and I found myself reading a book. And while I was reading, I kind of lost focus because this thought kept coming up. Shouldn't you be doing something else? Is this the best use of your time? Eh, there it was, right in front of us, this question in action. It had bubbled up without me even asking for it. And I was questioning if reading at that time was the best thing to do. And I had loosely told myself I was going to spend time working on this video that day. So shouldn't I be doing that? So I paused and I reflected. I noticed I was just, some of that was just anxiety talking. And then I said, yes, okay, working on this video would get me closer to my goal of having a successful YouTube channel. Therefore it is important, but there was nothing especially urgent about it. And reading this book would get me closer to my goal of finishing the book, <laughs> which I wanted to do for my book club. And because attending book club, there's no specific end goal in mind there, but it keeps me connected socially, which is an important aspect of my life. And because reading looks kind of passive and doesn't take much energy, it kind of allowed the negative voices to creep in, telling me to be productive and work on that video. But you know, <laughs> after years of that, I've been able to say, who cares about proving that to anyone, especially to the mean voice in my head. So appearing to be productive, let's let that go. So you know what it came down to? Physical comfort. It was a hot day and I didn't want to be upstairs in my hot office. And I was dealing with a tiny medical issue that would have meant sitting in my office chair for a long period of time would have made my hip hurt. So reading one. And in the end, it had nothing to do with priority lists and matrix frameworks or eating the frog. The most valuable thing to me was to pause for long enough to hear the difference between the anxious inner critic who always wants me to go, 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 go and look productive and the actual reality of the situation. And the reality was I work on the video the next day when my hip was feeling better and the weather was cooler and I could get some reading done and feel connected to my buddies that day. Whew. All right, so the next time you find yourself wondering what you're doing and if it's the right thing to be doing and the perfect thing to be doing and what your priorities should be, consider those four guideposts that we developed here. Getting it all out in front of you, letting the circumstances narrow your options, let your inner critic go, and maybe allowing one of those matrix frameworks to give you some guidance if you need it, and I'm gonna say the good enough answer will probably make itself known. My dear productivity pals, I wish you a great success and a sense of ease as you go through your days, feeling good about what you are doing at all times. No more feeling at loose ends for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.